Hello, hello! Welcome to another video. Today it's time for the stoners to get their recommendation video. <laughs> Then I hate hats on me. Oh, I just really, really dislike it. <laughs> but you got to do what you got to do to keep the snakes away. <laughs> um, if you're newer, I'm Denise from Adventures in the Enchanted Forest. And this is all for the Nevermore at Home. I'll link everything down below, the announcement video, all the other recommendations video, the whole playlist for you to go check out if you want to. Um, come join us on the Nevermore Academy in April um, and this will be recommendations for the Team Stoners. Team Stoners is captain by Caitlin from Mandy Book. Um, go check her out her channel um, and let's get started. <laughs> so the first thing on the bingo board for the Stoners is grey cover. And I got a few, but it, I gotta be honest with you, it was harder than I expected to be. First, I have Nooit gedacht, which directly translates to never thought, but I feel like never never would be a better. This is a Peter Pan retelling by Latoya Morris, it's in Dutch, if you haven't noticed. Um, but it was kind of grey, it's a bit bluish grey, but grey. Then I also got Down Among the Stick and Bones and Where the Drowned Girls Go. This again is a bit bluer grey, but still grey. Both by Shannon McGuire, both in the Wayward Children series. None of them the first. However, the more of kind of companion novels. So you don't have to start with the first one first. And I think most of you are surpassed the first anyway, so you know. Putting the options out there. Um, and another one is a Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. The first has a very grey cover. The second prompt on the bingo board is Creek Mythology. And I have to be honest with you. Turns out I haven't read any Greek mythology. And I I actually only want to recommend books to you in this recommendation video that I actually have read. Which is really hard if you haven't read a Greek mythology. <laughs> so I turned to the pack and the pack told me, every single one told me Electra was really really good. They really enjoyed it and they highly recommend it to you. And I don't know what it is. But it is a Greek mythology. <laughs> Um, and I want to put out here, if you really struggle with this prompt, because I know it's very specific and you don't really want to read Greek mythology, but do you do want to be in the stoners uh, based on the Gorgons? So any mythology would count. Um, Egyptian mythology would count, Indian mythology. I know, um, who is the guy that wrote the Pierce Jackson series? Could say it over on the times. I mean, yes, that includes I have not read the Percy Jackson series. I know. I could have told it hundred times, but I can't think of the name now. I'll put it down below. But he has a whole series on other mythology books um, and series, you know, and he all approves them. So you could pick one of those as well, you know. Anything that is mythology based will count for this. Um, I think just, you know, when you have a team about Gorgons, you have to throw Greek mythology in there. But I know it's very niche, so you can stretch it into mythology all over. For books that in the shop, I have to go with Pages and Go by Anna James. This is about Tilly, and Tilly is a book honorer who can wander into books and actually live the story. She can talk with the characters. Um, but Tilly lives in a bookshop with her grandparents. So this will is set a lot of the time in the bookstore. Um, also, the day I fell into a fairy tale would count because they fell into the fairy tale through a supermarket. So, you know, that is set in a shop. 
I would count it. For a book with a protector, I picked up A Deadly Education. I actually picked this book for this prompt and then saw it has the grey cover. <laughs> so now it's on it twice, but um, this is about a girl who's actually quite hated. And she actually keep people way off um, because of the magical talent she has. And one of the most beloved guys in the school is making herself her protector. And she does not want him. Um, but he, you know, he keeps through. <laughs> he keeps going. He, he does it anyway. And they, they um, end up being really good friends. But they definitely has the protector role on him. What I would also count is a Polar Bear Explorers Club by Alex Bell. Because Felix definitely protects uh, Stella in every single way. Mentally, physically. So this will come. And I love this. <laughs> because this is about explorer clubs from all over the world. And, you know. They actually only allow men or boys. And Stella is neither. But she really wants to join. And Felix let her. Um, and it's, it's amazing. It's cute. It's a polar fantasy about friendship and wholesomeness. And being yourself, you know. it's I love it. Then we have Set in Stone. Which basically means a book you already plan to read. Think about a buddy read or another book yet you really need to get in for a vlog. Anything you already planned will count for this. Uh, and that's also why I can't recommend this for you. Because you already have to plan it. And, you know? This will not work. Then you have favorite genre. And again, this is about your favorite genre. I put it in there because I forced you to read mythology. So I think you deserve to read your favorite genre. I don't know what your favorite genre is. So I can't really recommend you anything. But I think you will figure this one out. And then it's a second chance author. That again I can't really recommend you books. Because this is about uh, a book you read. But you didn't really like the writing. So you didn't really like the book. But you want to give this author another chance. For me that's Liz Breswell. Um, birthday was a huge letdown for me. I absolutely love Alice in Wonderland retellings. And I didn't like this one. I was so hyped for this one. The, you know, the sentence on the, on the front. What if Wonderland was in peril? And Alice was very, very late. That sounds perfect to me. But the execution? Not so much. Um, So Liz Breswell would definitely be a second chance author for me. Because... At this point, I don't really want to read anything from her. But this is the only one I read. So I'm not sure if, you know, this is not a good one. And all her other writings are really, really good. Or if this is her usual. So I should try her again. Then we have multiple perspectives because of the multiple snakes on their head. I think that was very clever, clever from Rosie to think of. Um, and I chose The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern for this. I actually hate books with multiple perspectives. Uh, so I don't ha read, read them much because I tend to DNF those. And honestly, Night Circus? You know, it was close. <laughs> the multiple perspective was very confusing to me in the beginning. But I'm so glad I pulled through. This is about a trial in a circus between two people. Um, and we follow multiple perspectives that, you know, set up this trial in multiple tightlines. And it was very confusing, but it gets together all in the end. This has a very magical setting. It has the best food descriptions in it. Um, so I'm really glad I stuck with it. But it can be hard to get through. Then we need to find a book with a reserved character. And I chose Luna by Peter Kulwijk. This is about a girl who hears voices. Um, and 
there is abuse in this. So she is a very reserved character. She doesn't really talk to anyone. She doesn't really... Uh, especially in the start when she comes. She actually only really talks to Tease. Another boy in this series. Um, but they're companion also. So you can read them separate. But Tease is also... She learn. She gets to know Tease in the mental health facility. Um, but you know she doesn't feel seen or heard or taken serious so she doesn't really speak she's very reserved but this is a beautiful story about this girl luna um who needs to learn to accept herself but also her mom needs to learn to accept herself and her mom needs to learn to stand up for herself and her daughters and the one that teaches them is the older sister and it's amazing <laughs> It's really cute. There's uh, Dia de la Morta in this. Um, it's, it is um, trigger warnings for abuse though. It's not You don't see a lot of it. But it's there. Uh, so I want to warn you about it beforehand. For a small book. We're looking for a book under 300 pages. Any book under 300 pages will count. If it's $2.99 it counts. And I chose Small Spaces by Catherine Arden. This is one of my favorite horror middle, middle grades. Um, this is a very small book. But they pack so much in these books. It's a quartet. So you can read four of them if you want to. Um, and the first one is all about scarecrows. The second one is about ghosts. The third one is about sea monsters. And the fourth is about clowns in a spooky ca carnival. Um... There is a storyline, so you should read them in order, though. Um, but they're really fun, really short. And I highly recommend them. Next up is One World Title. And for that, I picked One Escape by Jennifer Bell. This is a book about a virtual reality game. And these teenagers get in this game by accident through a portal. And they're uh, time-traveling... Um, and get kind of stuck in this game. And they need to play it to get back home safely. And there's a robot duck in this. Um, if you like gaming. I think you really like this book. This is a bit a bit like player one. But middle grade. For a hardcover. Any hardcover book would count. But the one I liked. And haven't talked about yet. Is Gallant by V.E. Swap. This is about a gothic horror house and it's a portal fantasy and it's a kind of tiny bit eerie and spooky and this is about 14 year old olivia olivia who is going to live in this spooky house and find stuff out basically yeah but it's very pretty and it's a hardcover for a coming of age story i chose beast and beauty dangerous tales by some so many shenani. These are all basically fairy tales reinvented to feel more modern, fit this modern day life. Uh, and they're mostly about girls and boys coming of age. <laughs> but you know, if you like fairy tales, you're gonna love this book. Um, I I loved it. I don't know how to how they described it, but. A princess's prize awakening, a beauty f fights like a beast, a boy refused to become prey, a pet to happiness is lost and found again. So it's not your typical damsel in distress um, fairy tales, but they feel very familiar anyway. There are the familiar stories, but twisted. If I make sense at all, it's late. I'm sorry. One more. Because friend pick... I cannot recommend for you, or I could, maybe I should, but I recommend you a bunch, so you can pick any of those. I would also recommend the Headmakers by Thames and Merchant, Rainbow Grey by Laura L. Anderson. You know, pick one of my videos about all my favorite books, any Alice in Wonderland retelling I would recommend. And you can count it as a friend pick because I picked it for you. But the meaning of this is that you let a friend pick a book for you. And that's it. Uh, so it's hard for me to recommend, but there you go. And then the last prompt is a character out of this world. And for that I chose House of Hollow because 
these three sisters were missing and they come back a bit too beautiful and too successful and now they're wondering if these sisters are out of this world or not this is a eerie it's not really spooky but the book definitely has eerie feel fantastical creepiness to it i really really liked it i can't really tell you more than this because that will spoil it um it's the best if you go unknowingly in these books um but it's really fun and i recommend it i hope these recommendations were any good for you that you had something about it if you have more recommendations for the stoners please leave them down below and i'll see you guys in april bye nerds